Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is awesome. Yes, he is. He's always awesome. Always. And we love him. Hallelujah. We love him. Regardless of what happens, regardless of what's said or what's done, the love of God prevails. The love of God prevails at all times. Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you, Lord. We love you so much. Don't you just love him? Hallelujah. Don't you love the Lord? Glory to God. Don't you love the Lord? I love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you all for coming on. And uh, as you all know, I'm going to do my bestest not to hold you too long. Um, just got a few things in my heart that I want to share. Hey, Aunt Jan. You know, I'm calling you Auntie. How you doing, Auntie Jan? All right. I love you, Auntie. My kids call you Auntie, so you know. Melvin Evans, bless you. Pastor O, how you doing, my dear? I love you. Hallelujah. My sister Sarah, I love you, Sarah. You always support me. Dante, what's up, my brother? Love you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate all you guys for coming on. Uh, who did I miss? Lisa James, how you doing, sis? Ashley, bless you, Ashley. Yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for coming on. And uh, Brother David, thank you guys for coming on and, and sharing this with me. Um, just got some things on my heart that I want to share. Uh, Pastor Amos, shalom, my brother. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. I love you guys. And I'm just going to give my shout outs. Nephew, how you doing, nephew? You got to teach me how to play that guitar the way you play it. I used to play it like that. My nephew Darius, love you, Darius. Appreciate you. Nicole Apostolic, I am humbled at your presence. Nicole Apostolic, I am humbled. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I love you guys. My cousin Vicky. Love you, Vicky. How you doing, cuz? Love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God awesome? The Lord is mighty. Glory to God. No matter what we say, no matter what people say, the Lord is mighty. His works are forever. His mercy is forever. The Lord is mighty. And I love him. Hallelujah. I love him. Marquita Meeks. How you doing, cousin? I love you. Love you, cuz. Good to have you watching. Brother Rodney, shalom, Miss Paca. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. As a matter of fact, I just want to bless everybody that's coming on right now. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for everyone that comes on this video. Watching live and watching later. We decree right now in Hashem Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, that everyone that watches this video will be blessed that they will be increased, Father, in their wisdom. They will be increased in finances. They will be increased, Father, in faith and strength. And Father, I thank you for that. I praise you for everyone who sees this video, everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak the power and the might and the wisdom of the Almighty into their spirit now. And Father, we thank you. Your grace is sufficient, and we live by your grace. And Father, we just love you, and we honor you, and we thank you because your word has declared that in you we live and we move and we have our being. Hallelujah. And Father, we lift our hands to you and we lift our spirits to you now in great adoration for who you are. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. In Yeshua's mighty matchless name, we love you. Bless you, Sarah Mitchell. Cousin Mary, love you all. Patricia, hallelujah, love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Um, just got done talking with Nicole about via... Uh, messenger and Nicole is coming on uh, Nicole Apostolic she's going to be on the 700 Club uh, they're going to film it and in just a couple of weeks she's going to be on the 700 Club so you guys make sure you go and like her page Nicole Apostolic type your page in there Nicole Apostolic so people can go and like your page she, she's a great friend of mine her and her mother she's going to be on the uh, uh, 700 Club coming up real soon Kia shine Kia shine hallelujah hallelujah all right, I want to just talk today um, about a topic that keeps coming to me. People keep asking me about this, and so I want to just deal with it, and maybe I could do it really quick. We're going to see how quick we can do this. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you want to donate, I don't want to get rebuked. I don't want to get rebuked and shut down again. So if you want to donate, if you want to uh, give into the ministry of Apostle Webster, I put the um, hashtag or the cash tag, the cash app. You can give via PayPal. You can... Mail a check in the mail 
inbox me, I give you my address, whatever you want to do. But if you want to sow into what God has given me, I sure will appreciate it. All right? I love you guys. Thank you. Uh, who else is this? Um, uh, Demina McLean. I don't want to mess your, main up, your, your name up there. Yvette, Evangelist, bless you, Evangelist Waters. Marty Blake? Marty Blake from high school? Bless you, Brother Marty. Appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you. I, don't even, I know you remember my brother Clyde. I was nothing back then in high school, so you might not even remember me. All right? But listen, there's a topic that I want to discuss here. I, there's a topic I want to discuss here, and this topic is, it keeps coming to me and people keep asking me about it. They say, Apostle, does the Bible support slavery? Hear this. Does the Bible support slavery? Now, you got a group of people now. These people are bold. And they're going around teaching this doctrine that the Bible is the white man's book and that Christianity is the white man's religion. You got a group of people teaching this. They call themselves, now I'm going to call their name. And the reason why I'm going to call their name is simply because they call our name. They'll come online and they say, hey, Christians are fake. Christians are phony and the Christian religion is fake. They do this all the time. And they say that we are the real ones and all that. And those people are the black Hebrew Israelites. Have you heard of them? Have you heard of the black Hebrew Israelites? They come on and they condemn everybody but them. They condemn everything breathing. Ain't nobody right but them. Well, got news for you. I got news for you. Hey, cousin Isaiah, love you, brother. Love you. Darcy, love you, Darcy. Well, I got news for you, black Hebrew Israelites. I got news for you. That news is, I love you. <laughs> and I love you so much that I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Now, now, black Hebrew Israelites, number one, first thing, first thing about this is, I, I need to understand where you're coming from. Because number one, hear this, people. Anytime people start going backwards under the law, notice, the, notice that there is a gradual progression. There's a gradual progression. When people start going back under the law, there's a gradual progression. They start out doing one thing, then the next thing you know, they're doing another thing. The next thing you know, they're doing another thing. The next thing you know, it's another thing until gradually you have began to keep with your flesh, the entire law. And the Bible has declared in Romans chapter 8 that you cannot keep the law with your flesh. Romans chapter 8 plainly says, but the law was made weak through the flesh. The law being made weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. So you can't keep the law with your flesh. So when people start trying to put law on you, hear what the word of God says. Hear what the word of God says. I want to try to take my time and do this quickly. Hear what the word of God says. Word of God plainly says, word of God plainly says that the law being made weak through the flesh. Hear that, people of God. The law is made weak, how? Through the flesh. If the law is made weak through the flesh, then the law... Or the flesh makes the law weak. Is the law is made weak through the flesh. So the flesh makes the law weak. Got that? The flesh weakens the law. If the flesh weakens the law, then what does the law do to the flesh? Hear that, people of God. The scripture said overcome evil with good. What, that's God's way. What's the devil's way? The devil's way is to overcome good with evil. That's the devil's way. The scripture said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the spirit is willing and ready and raring to go, but the flesh always makes excuse. So the scripture said the law is made weak through the flesh. So if the flesh weakens the law, then what does the law do to the flesh? Then the law strengthens the flesh. So when you find people that are digressing back to go under the law and to keep the law and to keep all the tenets of the law, what they're doing is they're strengthening the flesh. Do you know that there are 613 laws that God gave Moses? How many? Six, one, three. 613 laws God gave Moses. And Yahshua said, if you break any one of them, you're breaking them all. Hear me, people of God. So when people come to you, like these black Hebrew Israelites who claim that God is only saving them. And their prejudice, 
They're racist. They're angry. They're polygamous. They believe in having five, six, seven, eight wives. Come on now. Talk to me. And they say nobody can be saved but the house of Israel. Really? And they don't believe in Paul. They take Paul's gospel and throw it out the window. You know why? Because Paul preaches his gospel mainly to the Gentile. Paul had a heart for the Israelites. Paul said, would to God that the house of Israel be saved. Those are his people. Those are his people. But Paul opened up the door to the Gentiles. Matter of fact, God used Peter to do it in Acts chapter 10. Now, I believe the first Gentile that was officially saved was Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. He was the first one officially saved. But according to these black Hebrew Israelites, they don't believe Paul. They say, we're not following Paul. We're following Yahshua. Really? So you're following Jesus, huh? Okay. All right. Well, if you're following Jesus, tell me who was Paul following? Who knocked Paul on the ground on the road to Damascus? Who said to Paul, Shaul, Shaul, tease the oko kiyama? Who said that to Paul? Was that not Yahshua himself? Was that not Jesus talking to Paul? So then Jesus said, if you don't receive the ones that I sent, you don't receive me. So if you can't follow Paul, you are not following the Messiah. Hello, people. I'm just going to keep it real and alive with you right now. So anytime somebody decides that they're going to pick and choose which scriptures to obey. Now, you got the whole Bible. King James Version has 66 books, and uh, the original King James, I think it has something like 78 books, 79 books, because the Apocrypha was still there, still there. The Apocrypha is good. It is of God. In 1795, the Thomas Nelson publishers took the Apocrypha out. Nothing wrong with the Apocrypha at all. They just took it out because I don't know why they did it, but the Apocrypha still exists. So when you start picking and choosing which scriptures you're going to obey, now, now you're confusing me. We don't follow Paul. Well, who in the world are you following? Who are you following? So I can follow Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but I can't follow Acts, Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians. I can't follow that, but I can follow Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Either you follow the whole Bible or you follow none of it. All right? You follow the whole Bible or none of it. So when you black Hebrew Israelites, you come talking to me, you're going to have some problems. Oh, yeah, you're going to have some issues. Because God, the scripture says plainly in Titus that the grace of God which appears has appeared unto all men. Galatians says that there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither Jew, male nor female, by nor free, but we're all one in Christ. There ain't no limitation on salvation. No. Then, then you know, one, one black Hebrew Israelite told me this. He said, well, he said, well, Yahshua only preached to the Israelites. Yes, he did. That's who he was supposed to preach to. Grace didn't start until the day of Pentecost, my brother. Grace didn't start until the resurrection. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all Old Testament books. Oh, yeah. The Old Testament didn't end until the resurrection of Yahshua and the Holy Ghost fell in Acts chapter 2. That's when the Old Covenant ended and the New Covenant began. It didn't start in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's still Old Covenant. So Yahshua did what he had to do. Now, if you want to get technical with me, I want y'all to throw something out. I want y'all to check something out. In the Bible, in the Bible, Yahshua himself broke the law seven times. Let that sink in. He broke the law seven times. And those seven times, he might have did it more than seven. But the seven times that I'm referencing, he broke them seven times. And for each time, he did it for a woman. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. Adama, the first Adam, broke the law for his wife, for his woman. Hallelujah. Yahshua broke the law seven times. Each time, he did it for a woman. Search that out. Search that out. And so when you say that he kept the law, yes, he did. He kept the law, and he should have kept the law, all right? But this is what I want to tell you. For all you black Hebrew Israelites, I love you guys. But whatever happened to if you have faith, have it to yourself. Why in the world can't you just believe what you believe? Why do you got to try to push everybody else aside and make everybody else wrong? You know, if I believe what I believe, I'm not coming at you trying to make you wrong. I love you. If I have faith, I have it to myself. You have faith, you have it to yourself. But the black Hebrew Israelites, yeah, I keep calling their name. I can't stop calling their name. They think they're the only ones right. And they say God is only saving the Israelites. Now I'm going to tell you.
the number one flaw. Oh man, let me wipe my head off. I'm gonna give you a number one flaw of the black Hebrew Israelites. Are y'all ready? Y'all put the seatbelt on. The number one flaw of the black Hebrew Israelites. Put your ear to the, come here. Put your ear on the phone. The number one flaw is this. They say <laughs> that all of the slaves from Africa are the real Israelites. Selah. Y'all know they teach that. They say all the slaves from, from, from Africa are the real Hebrew Israelites. That's what they say. That's what they say. Hallelujah. Who told y'all that? Who told you that? Now check this out, people of God. When slavery first started, when slavery first started in America in 1619, in 1619, there was a ship called the White Lion that docked on uh, the port in Jamestown, Virginia. This is where slavery began in America. Hear me, people, put your ear on and listen to a brother. Slavery started in America in 1619. There were 20 slaves. 20 slaves got off the ship in Jamestown, Virginia, off a ship called the White Lion. Now check this out. Those slaves have been kidnapped. They weren't kidnapped from Africa. Well, they were originally. But the, but the White Lion, the crew of the White Lion, they, they, they pirated another Spanish ship and they kidnapped the slaves that had been kidnapped from Africa. Are y'all following me? They weren't from Africa, but they were on a Spanish ship. The crew of the White Lion hijacked that ship and they took over that ship and took the slaves off of that ship and brought them to America. Okay? 20 of them. 20 slaves from America, from uh, Africa rather, came to America, 1619. Now these slaves got off the slave ship singing Yohorad Moshe. That's Hebrew for go down Moses. What? They got off the slave ship singing Yohorad Moshe, go down Moses. Why were they singing that? Because these slaves were Israelites. Yes, they were. Because originally when slavery started, in Alkibulon, which we call Africa, the, the, the original slaves called it Alkibulon. All right, make a note of that. We call it Africa after Luciana's Africa. That's another story. Anyway, they came off the slave singing, Go Down Moses, because they were Israelites. Because when slavery first started, the Africans that were in Africa and Alkibulon, they weren't selling their own people. They were selling the, the Israelites who had migrated from Israel to northern Africa. There's a thing called the Goliath. The Goliath happened in 70 AD. We call it the Diaspora in the English. And the Hebrew is called the Goliath. The Goliath happened in 70 AD. That's when a lot of, oh man, Bishop Alton Davis, bless you, brother. That's when a lot of the slaves, a lot of the Jews, the original Israelites, left Israel because of a Roman takeover. They left Israel in 70 AD. They migrated to northern Africa. They migrated to northern Africa, and there was a whole slew of Israelites in Africa. So when slavery first started, the Africans weren't selling their own people. They were selling those Hebrews. But then when the money got good, when the money got good, they started selling their own folks. So every person that came from al or Africa as a slave were not Hebrew Israelites. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So then, my brothers and my sisters, what makes you think that just because you're African American, you are Hebrew? Where are you getting this from? Well, check this out. I got a test for you. Oh, hallelujah. I got a test for you. You know, now, this is why Hebrew Israelites won't talk to me. They won't talk to me. You know what they want to do? They want to have a long dialogue on Facebook. They want to type back and forth. They won't call a brother. Why don't y'all call a brother? Why don't you call me? Six, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. That ain't my number, but that's what the song said. So why don't you call a brother? So this is what, this is the problem. All these people talking about some real original Hebrews, they ain't had not one DNA test. How you even know you the daddy? You ain't had a DNA test. You might not even be the daddy. How you know, who told you you was an original Hebrew Israelites? And you ain't even had a DNA test. Don't you know that everybody in America that's of a dark, complected skin is not an original Hebrew? 
I'm just going to tell you like it is. And you will never know until you get a DNA test. Don't let somebody walk up and tell you because you black. You an Israelite. Oh, no, you ain't. You might not even be the daddy. You better get a DNA test. So when people are preaching this gospel, and they're preaching this message without validity. The Bible says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. You see this brother here, me, I got a DNA test. My DNA links me directly to Aaron, the brother of Moses. I am a Levite by DNA. I am a Levite by DNA. My DNA says on my daddy's side, on the Webster side, we are Israelites. So if you're watching me and you're related to me on my daddy's side, you are an Israelite from the tribe of Aaron. I have my DNA done. Lori Nance Thornton, you are an Israelite from the tribe of Aaron. Now, now check this out. Hear me, people of God. I have my DNA done. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Aaron. I'm, I'm actually of the Levitical priesthood. I'm actually from the Levitical priesthood. I'm a Levite. What does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. I'll tell you what that means. It means nothing. Don't mean nothing. It just means I know my history. That's all it means. I still need to be saved. I still need the body of Yeshua. I still need the blood of Jesus. I still need to repent for my sins. It don't make you special. You might be Michael Jordan's cousin, but that don't make you rich. See, people, don't let folk come putting all this stupidness on you. Black Hebrew Israelites, we can have five and six wives. I tell you what, if they thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, if you really believe in America that you can have five and six wives at one time, I want you to go marry all of them. Marry them. Move them into your house. Let me know how that works out for you. Let me know how that works out for you. You see, people, we got to stop this madness, all this racism. That ain't nothing but racism. If you are a black Hebrew Israelite and you're telling me that only black people can be saved, you don't lost your mind. God ain't racist. You are. Anybody who got blood flowing through their vein can be saved. Anybody, I don't care if you're an Eskimo, you can be Asian, don't matter what your nationality is. The blood of Jesus was shed for humans, all mankind, not a specific race of people. You better rightly divide your word. Rightly divide your word, people of God. Black Hebrew Israelite. What? And then they say this. Thank you, because foolishness. Then they say this. They say, well, the Bible supports slavery. Oh. Lord Jesus, are you serious? <laughs> Look, people, check this out. Check this out. Find the word slave in the Bible, number one. I think it's in there twice. Maybe. Maybe twice. Maybe twice. First time in the Old Testament, it's not even in the original language. It's not even in the original language. It's an add-in by the editors. And it, I'm going to tell you all this. Now, don't y'all tell nobody I told y'all this, all right? Shh. Don't tell nobody I told y'all this. This is going to be private just between us, Okay. Don't tell nobody I told y'all this. This is going to be private just between us. The first time the word slavery was used in the Bible, it was written in italics. Anytime you see any word in the Bible that's written in italics, it's not of the original text. It's added by the editors for clarity's sake. So the first time the word slave was used in the Bible, it wasn't even really used. It was added by the editors. It's used again in the book of Revelation, but it used the word soma. You know soma is your physical body. Your physical body is a slave to sin. That's what the reference was. So when the people tell you that the Bible supports slavery, oh no, it doesn't. The Bible does not support slavery. Look here. Slavery that happened in America was an atrocity. The Bible never supported that. Never supported that. Bless you, Pastor Turner. The Bible never supported that. Look in the scriptures. The scripture says... Servants obey your masters. Then it says, masters, be respectful to your servants. American slavery, a master was never respectful to a servant. In the Bible, you were only a slave because you either owed somebody or you received a debt from somebody who died and you were indentured. You were not a slave forever in the Bible. They had seven-year slavery. They had the year of Jubilee where everybody was set free. You better talk to a brother. Don't be telling me the Bible support lynching. The Bible does not support lynching. The Bible does not support American slavery. No, it doesn't. Th there were masters and servants. Servants uh, way before America was even colonized. Don't tell me that. So people think, oh, the Bible supports slavery. Stop, stop, stop it. Why don't you black Hebrew Israelites talk to somebody who knows something? Leave the people alone who don't know what they're talking about. Talk to somebody who knows something. Oh, you feel that? 
Come on, Brother Jim, we're all slaves to the crucify. You want to crucify something, crucify the flesh. <laughs> oh, my God, my nephew said, I'm the pappy. Get that DNA test, people of God. Get a DNA test and you can find out. Don't be telling me, oh, the Bible supports slavery. No, it doesn't. Matter of fact, let me drop this nugget on you. Let me drop this nugget on you. Drop this on you. When slavery first started in America in 1619, when those 20 slaves got off the white lion slave ship and they came out singing, yo, hurrah, the Moshe, go down Moses. Do you know that they were only enslaved for seven years? Oh, yeah, they were only slaves for seven years because when slavery first started in America, there was no legalism to slavery until after 1640. In 1619, those slaves were only slaves for seven years and they were treated with respect. And after seven years was up, guess what? They were given land and property. Stop it. With the Bible support slavery. Stop that. The Bible is a white man's book. The Bible is a human book. For human beings, you know, racism stinks. It stinks. And you, if you are, if you are a black Hebrew Israelite, you need to repent. Stop it with your racism. Calling white people racist. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're a racist too. You're talking about can't nobody be saved. I'm an original Hebrew Israelite. Show me your DNA test. Don't mess with me. I'll put my DNA test on the screen. Don't mess with me. If you think that the Bible supports slavery, prove it to a brother. Matter of fact, the word servant in the Hebrew is erbed. You say erbed in the Hebrew. That's servant, erbed in the Hebrew. And the word master, check this out. You know the word master already because we use it all the time, Adonai. We use it all the time, Adonai. So uh, 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 a slave or, or servant in the Hebrew text was indentured. Seven year period. And after 49 years, after one year later, the year of Jubilee, they all were set free. So in 1619, when those slaves came off the white lion, they only served their slaves for seven years and they were set free and given property. American slavery became vile and violent after 1640. I'm going to tell you one thing that sparked that. This, now, this, I'm going to give you some good information there, people of God. Hallelujah. Listen to this. When, when in the first black slave that ever ran away, are y'all writing this down? Oh, you better take some notes. The first black slave that ever ran away, his name was John Punch. J-O-H-N-P-U-N-C-H. That's the name that his master gave him, John Punch. John Punch ran away from Jamestown, Virginia. I think he went to Maryland, maybe Baltimore. So I don't know where he went. He went to Maryland, went to the state of Maryland. All right? Now, he ran away. Him, and guess who ran away with him? Guess who ran away with him? His Caucasian friend who was a slave also. You see, slavery wasn't just for black folk. When America was first colonized, the poor Caucasians were slaves also. And they had to work their way out of slavery also. Oh, I bet you didn't know that. Google it, my friend. They, so when John Punch ran away, he took his best friend, the Caucasian slave, with him. He took his Caucasian slave with him, who was his buddy. They ran off. Now, when they came back, and they got caught and brought back, John Punch was sentenced to life as a slave. He was sentenced to life as a slave. Now, the Caucasian brother was sentenced to one more year. So he did eight years instead of seven. At that point, the governor of Jamestown, you better Google this, people of God, the governor of Jamestown made a new law, and then from that point, it progressed into modern-day slavery, lynchings and beatings. The Bible don't support that. That's not biblical. Man, get the dust out of your ear. Wake up. Smell the coffee. Drink it and eat the cup. Quit tripping. Y'all better wake up, people of God. Now, tell you something else about John Punch. John Punch, you know who he was? <laughs> oh my God, this is good. John Punch was President Barack Obama's great, 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 great grandfather. 12th grandfather of Barack Obama was John Punch, the first man that ran for office. <laughs> I know, I mean, he ran, he didn't run for office, but he was running, he was running for office. The office he ran for was the office of being free, John Punch. So Barack Obama had it in his genes to run. It was in his genes to run. Y'all better feel that. Barack had it in his genes to run. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me throw this at you. Let me throw this at you. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just so, 
I'm just so blessed at learning the truth of God. People of God, the Bible said in Romans chapter 8 that the law was made weak because of the flesh. The law is weak because of the flesh. I love you too, Cousin Sarah. Love you, dear. The law was made weak because of the flesh. So then, if, if, if the flesh weakens the law, I'll say it again, then the law strengthens the flesh. So anyone who's going back to the law, you're strengthening your flesh. Yahshua wanted us to worship where? In spirit and in truth. Look, people, in, in the old covenant, when God was bearing up or raising up the children of Israel, he wanted to give them so many things. It was God's desire to bless them in such a great way. But they could not receive. Why? Their flesh was in the way. Their flesh was in the way. So God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh condemned sin in the flesh. So we are now to follow the pattern of Yahshua. We'll be led by the spirit now. He told the lady at the well, oh yeah, that lady he wasn't supposed to be talking to. Remember? Because he's supposed to be keeping the law. If he was going to keep the law, he should have stoned that adulterous woman to death. They brought that woman to Yahshua and they said to him, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. What you want to do, Jesus? And the Lord said, he, he wrote down on the ground. Oh, oh man, oh man, hear this. The Lord stooped down and he wrote on the ground. What did he write? <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody type that. What did he write? He wrote on the ground. They bought that woman to him and they said, we caught her in the very act of adultery. And he began to write on the ground. Somebody type, what did he write? Question mark. What did he write? Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you what I believe he wrote. I'm going to tell you what I believe he wrote. And I believe I got scripture to bag me up. Hallelujah. What did he write in the ground? They bought this woman, caught her red-handed in adultery. And you are the Messiah. You're supposed to keep the law. So what in the world are we going to do with this adulterous woman? What are we going to do with her? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Bless you, Prophet Mish. I love you, baby. Hallelujah. What in the world are we going to do with this? What did he write? What did he write in the ground? Hmm. All right. In the book of Jeremiah, the scripture says, all they that turn away from him should be written in the dust. Oh, come on. There it is, Apostle Brown. He wrote their names. All they that should turn away from him should be written in the dust. That's what the book of Jeremiah says. I believe he began to write their names down. All these guys that bought that woman and said, oh, we caught an adultery. The Lord just bowed his head and started writing down Ricky, Ricky Jones, Michael Clark, Apostle J.W. Webster. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, he wrote all their names down and they saw their names and they're like, oops, and they turned around and walked away. All they that turn away from him should be written in the dust. That's in the book of Jeremiah, people. So I believe he wrote their names down. I'm just saying, that's just what I believe. I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying that's what I believe. So they turned around and they walked away from him. They walked away from him. Because the flesh, thank you, Brother Jim, the flesh is God's enemy. So he was keeping the law. Why didn't he stone that lady to death? He showed her love. He showed love to that woman. You know why he showed love to that woman? Because love is the fulfillment of the law. Oh, you want to fulfill the law? You got to walk in some love, people of God. In Matthew chapter 5, I mean, this is a great, great, great scripture to read. In Matthew chapter 5, if you start reading in verse, um, matter of fact, they got the Beatitudes in chapter 5. And they got all of the, um, uh, just, it's Yahshua just talking mostly the whole time. But in Matthew chapter 5, he said to them, he said, you think that I come to destroy the law? Oh, hear me, people of God. Let me expound. Hallelujah. You think that I've come to destroy the law? Yahshua says, no, baby. I ain't come to destroy the law. I come to do what? I came to fill it up. I came to fulfill the law. Come to do what? Play a role in the Greek. Play a role. Say it with me. Play a role. I come to fulfill the law. For, fulfill it. Play a role. And I know what that means? That means to fill it up to the brim. That means to manifest it. That means to make it alive. That means that I'm going to show you what it meant. That's what he said in Matthew 5, 17. Then he says this here. Then he says this here, people. He says, don't think I come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Then he told you, keep on reading. Don't read one verse. Keep reading. Then he told you in verse 17. Then he says um, in verse uh, 21, he says, you've heard. 
it's saying of old time, thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that, thou shalt not this. Then you go down to verse 30 something. He said, you've heard this, but I'm telling you this. Keep on reading down. He said, you've heard this. I'm telling you this. You've heard commit not adultery. But I tell you this, if you look at a woman and lust after her, you commit adultery. Where? In your heart. The Hebrew word for adultery is naoth. Say it, naoth. Know what it means? It don't mean having sex with nobody. The children of Israel committed adultery against God. Who they get in the bed with? Nobody. Naoth is a sin of the heart. It's a sin of the heart. Hallelujah. You sin in your heart. Those of you, oh, let me bust this down. I know I got to get off. Those of you who have a wife and you have a relationship with some woman that's illegal, I don't care if you ain't sleeping with her. You committed adultery in your heart. Hallelujah. Yeah, I said it. I said it. You're supposed to be faithful to one person. One. Echad. One. Hallelujah. He kept on saying, but I say. He said, it is written of old, but I say. So then, that woman that was caught in adultery, if he was going to keep the law, he should have killed her. The woman at the well in St. John chapter 4, if he was going to keep the law, he shouldn't have been talking to her. But he said, I must needs go through Samaria. He said, I got to go to Samaria. It's destined for me to get there. Why? To talk to this woman who was a Gentile, which he wasn't supposed to be doing, you law keeper, you. Hear me. You can't keep the law with your flesh. People of God, don't do it. Now, now, now here, I'll even give you this much. I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say this to you. If you want to keep the law, do your best. There's 613 laws. You got to keep them all. You can't just keep 10. You got to keep them all. Yahshua said love is the fulfillment of the law. Go ahead. It's how you fulfill the law. David said I hid the word where? In my heart that I might not sin against thee. I hid it in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So when you begin to be led by the spirit of God, you will fulfill the law. I keep the Sabbath better than most Sabbath keepers. Pick that. Peep that out. I keep the Sabbath more than most Sabbath keepers. You know why? Because I keep the Sabbath in my spirit. There is no day of the week that I'm not honoring my father. There is no day of the week that I'm not worshiping 24-7. God is not looking at a Gregorian calendar. You think God honors a day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Let me tell you, people, our God is not governed by natural time. He's governed in the realm of the spirit he governs. And when you begin to follow him in the realm of the spirit, Shabbat will be to you every single day. Hallelujah. Shabbat is right now. Shabbat is then. Shabbat was a few minutes ago because he's holy. He's holy. Hallelujah. I don't do nothing on no day that I won't do on Shabbat. I'm just saying, I love you all. I love you all. I love you too, you black Hebrew Israelite you. I love you. But guess what? I want to see the DNA test. You say you're a black Hebrew Israelite, show me your DNA. I did mine. I'm from the tribe of Levi. It means nothing. It just means I know who I am. I still need to be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is willing to save anyone. Don't let people tell you that certain people can't be saved. Stop it. Stop it. And God does not honor American slavery. No. Stop that. People, stop it. Don't let people catch you vulnerable. Don't let people catch you hurting and then catch you going through a bad time and give you, feed you some false doctrine and you fall for it. Learn how to walk in the spirit. Yahshua said they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are Ben Yahuwah. They are the sons of God. When you are led by the spirit, you are the sons of God. You are Kurio Shabbat. That's who you are. Hello, people. Understand that. Walk in love. Stop the racism. Stop telling folk they can't be saved. Walk in love. Hallelujah. Walk in love. All right? I love you guys. If you want to sow into my ministry, I'll put it up there. Cash tag, it's up there. PayPal, apostlejwgmail.com. I'll put it on the post. If you want to sow, I got rebuked for not asking people to sow. So I'm asking, all right? If you want to sow into my ministry, yes, I need it. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what. Don't send me your tithe. Send your tithe to your local assembly. Yeah, hallelujah. Don't send your tithe to Apostle Webster. Stop it. Send your tithe to your local assembly. You can send an offering to a brother, not your tithe. Hallelujah. How about that? <laughs> Glory to God. As, you know what? As bad as I need an offering, I don't, uh, I, I'd rather have a righteous dollar than an unrighteous thousand. Hallelujah, people.
I love you all. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been long enough. And, and I love you all. Thank you all for listening to me. I really appreciate you. All right? I love you. I love you. I really love you. And I thank you. I thank you. And don't try to keep the law in your flesh. Do not attempt to keep the law with your flesh. Walk in the spirit. You got questions? Call a brother. Holler at me. All right? I love you. Hashalom, ya ruach hakodesh atah. May the spirit of God be with you. Hallelujah. Shalom.